Her point of personal privilege. Delegate Levine, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Speaker. On Monday, on the Privileges and Elections Committee, we had a vote on the constitutional amendment, the so-called redistricting amendment, the amendment I call the gerrymandering amendment. Uh, I voted no on that, but the amendment passed out of committee. And a few minutes after casting my vote, I got a text from a friend, a fellow Virginian. And the text says, and I quote, why do we even bother to elect Democrats if they just willingly hand their power back to Republicans anyway? Your colleagues are bringing a bouquet of flowers to a gunfight. <laughs> Madam Speaker, I know that the folks across the aisle strongly support this amendment. We have heard repeatedly from Delegate Cole, Delegate Gilbert, several times by both of them this session how much they really, really want this constitutional amendment. They have said so very clearly. And although when they said they wanted to prevent gerrymandering, there was a little bit of snickering and scoffing on our side of the aisle, I have no doubt that they want this amendment. And to understand what someone wants, a lot of times you have to look at the history of what they've done. So the delegate uh, from Spotsylvania County, the gentleman from, from Shenandoah, uh, have been here quite a while. They were both here in 2011 when we had a very strong gerrymander in favor of Republicans. In fact, it was an illegal racial gerrymander. You don't have to take my words for it. You can take the word of the United States Supreme Court, not generally considered to be a liberal body. They found by seven to one that 11 districts were racially gerrymandered and the one dissent, Justice Thomas, found that 12 districts were racially gerrymandered. So when it comes to gerrymandering, we know that the gentleman from Spotsylvania, the gentleman from Shenandoah, really, really like it. In fact, when Democrats, a lot of people on my side of the aisle, uh, Delegate Plum has probably done this for 30 years now, have put four bills, maybe longer, 40 he says, uh, have put four bills to have an independent commission, a bipartisan commission, to take it out of our hands, repeatedly, consistently, every single time those bills died in subcommittee or, or were not heard at all. So we know that the Republicans of Virginia support gerrymandering. They have been nothing but consistent on that point. And to be fair to them, that's perfectly legal. The United States Supreme Court has just held that as long as you don't racially gerrymander, legislators across the country can gerrymander to their heart's delight. Go ahead, rig the elections, leave the voters out of it. It's just fine, says the United States Supreme Court as of last year. Just don't racially gerrymander. That's against the Voting Rights Act. But otherwise, go forth and gerrymander yourselves to oblivion. And indeed, uh, the folks on the other side of the aisle have done just that for more than two decades now. So when they support this constitutional amendment, this isn't a question of sudden flip-flops and switching sides. This is a question of being consistent. How? Well, I asked some questions of the patron on Monday. I said, does the constitutional amendment allow gerrymandering? He said, yes, it does. It allows gerrymandering. Are there any restrictions in the constitutional amendment against gerrymandering? <coughs> no, no, there are none. There are none. All the Constitutional <laughs> Amendment requires is the gentleman from Spotsylvania and the gentleman from uh, Shenandoah to agree, and suddenly it goes to the Supreme Court. The whole commission system gets thrown out the window if the two of them want that to happen. Doesn't matter if eight citizens want us to do independent commission. It doesn't matter if the other six legislators want it. If those two want to go to the Supreme Court, it goes to the Virginia Supreme Court. And what will the Virginia Supreme Court do? Well, the Constitutional Amendment tells us in 11 words. It says, the district shall be established by the Supreme Court of Virginia. That's what it says. No more, no less. No guardrails, no criteria, no independent commission. They get to decide. They get to decide on their own. Now, Democrats, including my colleague, Delegate Price, have proposed an alternative. We have said, let's have a true bipartisan commission. That's in HB 1256. And we'll get it right for 2021. We'll put a constitutional amendment in by 2022. It will be permanent. It will be done right.
of the constitutional amendment that we're voting on, everyone agrees is flawed. I actually haven't met a single person yet, maybe someone will come to me, but I've not met a single person yet that says, I like this constitutional amendment exactly the way it is. Opponents clearly think it's flawed. Supporters think it's flawed. One Virginia 2021 thinks it's flawed. Brian Cannon thinks it's flawed. We even heard the, the gentleman from Spotsylvania say, yeah, it's not the way I want it to be. So nobody really likes what this amendment says. And of course, my colleague to my right here, Delegate Watts, points out there's all kinds of time problems with it. Uh, we may be having primary, we may know our districts in September and have primaries in October. Uh, we'll have less time than a special election. That may well happen in 2020. She also mentions the transparency problems with it. But the Constitution, if this amendment passes, it just says the Supreme Court of Virginia shall establish the district. So let's see what guardrails we have in the Constitution around the Supreme Court of Virginia. Article 6 of the Constitution, the Virginia Constitution, describes the powers of the Virginia Supreme Court. And you know what? They are all judicial powers. Every single one of them. The Supreme Court of Virginia has been around for 397 years, almost 400 years. And in that time period, I'm unaware of any time in four centuries we have given the Supreme Court of Virginia legislative power. If someone knows of one, let me know. But let's read from our current constitution. It says in section one, the General Assembly shall set out what judges are there. In fact, it mentions the General Assembly four times. It talks about the General Assembly establishing their jurisdiction. That's section one. Section two goes on to the General Assembly and how they established the, the judges. Section four, the administration of the judicial system. Even there, even though that we let the Supreme Court administer the judicial system, they have to do so pursuant to our rules and regulations. Section five lays out courts of appeals and pre procedures in the courts. Doesn't lay out these procedures, that's in a separate section. But even those, we get to have some power over. Selection and qualification of judges, section seven, section eight, section nine, section 10. Throughout all of this constitution as currently constituted, we have power to control what the Supreme Court does. That's been consistent, I submit, for 400 years until now. If this constitutional amendment goes into effect for the first time in Virginia history, you will have, they, they used to say judge and jury, no, you've got a judge and a jury and a legislature and a governor all embodied in the seven individuals on the Supreme Court of Virginia with zero guardrails. Now, currently, there's lots of guardrails, right? We, as a legislature, pass a law. The court can declare it unconstitutional. The governor can veto the law. We constrain the governor by virtue of our laws by the, by the Supreme Court. But here we have an unconstrained body, a body that has no appeal. And if you heard our discussion on Monday, you know that we asked the patron, can they appeal this? No. The Supreme Court shall establish the districts. You can't go to the United States Supreme Court unless it's a racial gerrymander. They decide, they're the legislature, they're the governor, they draw the districts, there is no appeal. That's a lot of power that we are giving for the first time in 400 years to the Virginia Supreme Court. So who is the Virginia Supreme Court? They are people chosen by the Republican majority in this chamber, a majority of which were chosen by the Republican majority in the Senate. And I have no doubt they are good people. But I also know that people who want bipartisan redistricting or independent redistricting want both sides to pick the people drawing the districts. They don't want the Republicans drawing the districts any more than they want the Democrats drawing the districts. This is a body chosen by Republicans, chosen for Republicans, chosen to help Republicans. I mean, let's look who's on the court. We have the judge that wrote opinions for Ken Cuccinelli. We have a sister of a sitting Republican senator. We have an ex-Republican senator and delegate. I'm sure these are good people, but they're not bipartisan. They are majority Republican. So I go back to the comment by my friend. Why are Democrats willingly giving away power? My friend understands why Republicans support this. He doesn't understand why some Democrats support this. And let's face it, in 2011, Governor McDonald ran 
that there should be an independent commission. And what happened? The Republicans in this body at that time in 2011 said, we don't want an independent commission. We're just going to gerrymander our way. So some have said, Mark, don't worry. The enabling legislation will fix it all. We got, we got you covered. You know, the law that we passed, the enabling legislation, uh, that will fix it all. That still hasn't passed both bodies. But if it does, that will fix everything. Don't worry. So I asked the question of the patron of the bill. I said, when a law is inconsistent with the Constitution, which prevails? And he answered, rightfully, the Constitution prevails. And every law student in America knows that when a law and a Constitution are inconsistent with each other, the Constitution prevails. We hear of laws all the time being declared unconstitutional. We've never heard of a Constitution being declared unlawful. It doesn't happen. The Constitution wins. And, as noted, this isn't in the judicial section of the Constitution. We're putting legislative power in the Supreme Court. So, if we have an enabling legislation that says, you can't pick your brother, which is in the enabling legislation, I wouldn't blame the, 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 the senator's sister for saying, nope, the Constitution trumps the law. I can do whatever I want. And the sad part is, I think she'd be right. In fact, some people have told me, hey, Mark, don't tell them that the Constitution trumps the law. Don't tell them that they can ignore all this law. They're intelligent people. They're going to figure it out. I'm not worried that I'm telling them something they can't do. But let's say I'm wrong. I pray to God I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I hope the Supreme Court ignores the power we're about to give them in the Constitution and says, I'm going to obey these laws even though I, I don't have to. I hope they do that. Now, we don't say in the amendment that they shall establish districts according to law. We do throughout Article 6. We say everything else they do has to be according to law. But, you know, that amendment that came to us on the last Saturday of session a year ago, that wasn't put in there. We only had a few minutes to look at it, and we didn't see according to law in there. So that's not in there. We could fix it, but we would need another constitutional amendment. And I'm also concerned by the fact that those who want to fix it later want to go to the voters in 2020 and say, pass the flawed amendment, the one that allows gerrymandering, the one that doesn't allow an appeal, pass that one, and then we're going to come back in 21, and we're going to have an election, and we're going to come back in 22, and then we'll fix the mistake that we put in the Constitution in the first place. Pardon me if I think that will confuse a bunch of voters. So at the end of the day, I guess it does come down to who you trust. Do you trust the party that has consistently been in favor of gerrymandering to favor their party? Or do you trust the party that has consistently said, we want fair districts, has put forward legislation to have fair districts, and if you don't like HB 1256, we can actually do it in 2021? Who do you trust? At the end of the day, I believe that putting in our Constitution an amendment that allows gerrymandering, that doesn't allow appeal, that allows the Supreme Court of Virginia to be judge, jury, legislator, and governor, that's just not a risk I'm willing to take. And so for all those reasons, I urge everyone to vote against the constitutional amendment when it comes to the floor. Thank you, Madam Speaker.